It's my friend Horton. I'm really happy that our next set of Sunday School videos are based on stories by Dr. Seuss. I loved his books when I was growing up. They're funny, they're a little strange at times, and they help us look at the world in a kind of a sideways, upside down kind of way. But honestly, Bible stories are that way too. If you read the Bible, you, you, you read stories that tell us that we don't have to be rich or strong or have the most friends or be the smartest to be loved by God. God wants every person to know they're important and valuable. And that and God needs all of us to make the world what it's meant to be. I like Horton. This is Horton here. Horton is the star of Horton Hears a Who. As you learn the story, you'll see that Horton believes in things he can't actually see. And he does everything he can to be helpful, even when people around him make fun of him for being good and being kind. Horton's an elephant, and you might think he would be thick-skinned and big and strong and kind of tough. But actually, Horton is soft-hearted and loving and not pushy or scary. If you don't know the story of Horton, if you're learning it for the first time, I hope you like it. Hi everyone. We're so glad you've come to join us for our Sioux Sunday School series. This is our first Sunday and Reverend Darrow had given you a little bit of a history about it and we are going to get started now. If your family has registered you at the church, you received our bag package with all the materials that you're going to need for the next four weeks. In here, there is a special note for your parents because it has a, a few extra things you might need, like a pair of scissors, some glue, um, maybe some crackers one week. You'll find out what that's all about. So this, this particular letter in there is for your parents or your family members to help you get ready for Sunday school that week. And because we're kicking this off on Valentine's Day, in your bag, you'll find a special, better turn it the right way, Valentine's scavenger hunt. And so the scavenger hunt is something special we had for you of things you need to find around your house that have to do with Valentine's. And there's special stickers in here. When you've got it done, then you can put the sticker on after that. And that's in your bag as well. The other articles in here are marked for which week that they're being used. Our first two weeks, we're going to have Horton and Yertle the Turtle. And we're going to tell those stories. You might know them, but we're going to look at them a little bit differently in the next few weeks. And this week, Miss Emily is going to start to read Horton Here's a Who. It's kind of a fun story, and Horton has a special saying that he says, a person is a person no matter how small and he goes and he takes care of these people even though there's some people that are being a little bit mean that's not nice now to get started each week we're going to have a special song and it's called small things count and I have my friend Max and he's going to teach you this song Max hi everybody happy Valentine's Day uh, so here is our first song, Small Things Count. know that we're starting the Dr. Seuss series today and today we're going to be reading the book called Horton Here's a Who. 
first I would like to read a Bible verse. Matthew 10, verses 29 through 31. Jesus said, Are not the sparrows sold for pennies? Yet not a single sparrow falls to the ground without God's knowledge. As for you, every hair of your head has been counted. So don't be afraid of anything. You are worth more than an entire flock of sparrows. Words and Here's a Who by Dr. Seuss. On the 15th of May in the jungle of Nu, and the heat of the day in the cool of the pool, Horton the elephant heard a small sound. So Horton stopped splashing. That's funny, he thought. There's no one around. Then he heard it again. Just a very faint sound, like as if a tiny person was calling for help. I'll help you, said Horton. But who are you? Where? He looked and he looked. He could not see anything, but a small speck of dust was blowing past through the air. I say, I've never heard of this, of a small speck of dust that is able to yell? Hmm. So do you know what I think? There must be someone on that small speck of dust, some sort of creature of very small size, too small to be seen by an elephant's eyes. some poor little person who's shaking with fear that he'll blow into the pool. He has no way to steer, but I will save him because after all, a person's a person, no matter how small. So very gently, he stretched his great trunk through the air and he lifted the speck of dust and he carried it over. He placed it down safe on a very soft clover. Hoomph, humped a voice. It was sour kangaroo. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, hoomph, too. Why, that speck is as small as the head of a pin. A person? Ugh, that is not possible. Believe me, said Horton, I will tell you, my ears have heard them very quite clearly. I know there's a person down there, and what's more, quite likely there's two, even three, even four. Maybe a family for all that we know. So please, said Horton, try not to disturb them, just please let them be. I think you're a fool, laughed Sour Kangaroo. You're the biggest blame in the jungle of Newell. And the kangaroo plunged in the cool of the pool. What terrible splashing, the elephant frowned. I can't let my very small persons get drowned. I have got to protect them. So he picked up the clover and he walked away. To the high jungle treetops, the news quickly spread. He talks to a dust speck. Just look at him walk with that speck on that flower. And Horton walked, worrying for almost an hour. Should he put the speck down? But if I put them down, they may come to great harm. I can't put them down, and I won't. After all, a person's a person no matter how small.
Then Horton stopped walking. He could hear a faint voice. Speak up, please, said Horton, and he put his ear near it. My friend, you're a very fine friend. You've helped us. You've saved all of our homes, our ceilings and floors. You've saved all our churches and grocery stores. You mean, <gasps> Horton guess, you have buildings down there too? Oh yes. I know we're too small to be seen, but I'm the mayor of the town and it is friendly and clean. My town is called Whoville, for I am a who, and we who's are all thankful and grateful for you. And Horton called back to the mayor of the town, you're safe now, don't worry. I won't let you down. But just as he spoke, three big jungle monkeys climbed up Horton's neck. The Wickersham brothers were shouting. He's shouting and talking to who's? And we're going to stop all of this. So there. They snatched Horton's clover. They carried it off. They gave it to a black-bottomed eagle named Vlad Vladikov, the mighty strong eagle of very swift wing. He said, I'll get rid of this thing. And then he flew off with the flower in his beak. All that afternoon and into the night, the eagle kept flapping and flying. Horton chased after him with groans over stones. And he begged, please don't harm all of my little folks. But the eagle kept flapping away and over his shoulder he called back, I will fly all night. I'm a bird and I don't mind it. And I'll hide this tomorrow and you'll never find it. Oh goodness, look at this field of clover that the eagle is dropping the clover into. He let the small clover drop somewhere inside the clover field. Find that, sneered the bird, but I think he will fail. And he left. I'll find it, cried Horton. I shall find my friends on my small speck of dust. So clover by clover, he looked over with care and he called <coughs> out, are you there? But clover by clover, he found that it was not the clover he was looking for. Then after he had been looking for hours and hours, he found them at last on the three millionth flower. My friends, he cried, tell me, are you safe? Are you sound? Are you well? From down on the speck came the voice of the mare. We really had trouble. When we were dropped, we landed so hard that our clocks all stopped and our teapots are broken and our rocking chair smashed. Oh, Horton, please, said the mare. Will you stick by us? Will you stick by us whose while we're making the repairs? Of course, Horton said. Of course, I will stick. I'll stick by you small folks through thin and through thick. I'm going to pause reading there for today. I'm wondering if you can think of a time when you helped a person similar to how Horton is helping the who's. I'm going to stop there for today for part one and we'll continue to read the story later for part two. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you, Miss Emily. That's a very interesting story with Horton. Now we're going to have a body prayer, which means you're going to be pointing to different parts of your body as you say the prayer. And this body prayer that we're using uses our eyes, our ears, our nose 
and their mouth. I think some of you might know this prayer, and Sue is going to lead us in this prayer. We can just follow along with our actions. So first we start off with pointing to our eyes. There we go. You going to help me with this? Okay. God be in my eyes and in my seeing. God be in my ears and in my listening. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. And God be in my heart and in my loving. Amen. Hi, I'm Miss Leslie, and I'm going to show you a craft that you can make to remember your Horton Here's a Who story. In your bag, you will have uh, a kit like this for your craft, and it will say Horton Week 1. So if you could get that out. And the other things that you're going to need to find in your house is some scissors and a glue gun or a glue uh, bottle. And you will need a, either a gray uh, pencil or a crayon. So remember the, uh, what they, uh, they told you in the story. You'll use this as your background piece on the paper. And they said, a person is a person, no matter how small. And that was what Horton was saying. So some of you may have one that you can peel off, or some of you may have ones that are just a piece of paper like this. So if you have a piece of paper, you can, uh, you can trim it down a bit, and then you can use your glue stick to uh, cover the back of it and put it up on the top right hand side of your paper there. So the next thing you need to find is this uh, gray piece of paper and you'll see some lines on there. So you will take your piece of paper and you will cut out Horton's trunk. Some of you are able to do that yourselves, and some of you might want to get your mom or your dad to help you do that. Now, the other thing that a trunk has, and if you look at it on Horton, they have these big wrinkles on the trunk. All elephants have big, big wrinkles. So you can take your, uh, your crayon or your uh, pencil, and you can put on those little wrinkles, or big wrinkles maybe get bigger as they get to the top of the trunk. So then we're going to take this and we're going to use a glue stick and put lots of glue on the back because this has got to hold on to the flower with the clover on the top. So you put that over to the left side, maybe about halfway down your picture, like that. So then you look for your uh, pipe cleaner. So they're all different colors. This one is a red one. This one's a green one. We had some white ones, all different colors. So you're gonna have to glue this. This is probably the hardest thing to get to stick. Get some glue on there and you're gonna, the trunk's gonna hold on to that. You can lift that up a little bit and stick it in there because that's how Horton held the flower with the clover and the who's on top. And then for your flower on top, you've got some sparkly, fun little things like pom-poms. So on the top of that, you can put some glue on your paper and there you have a clover and the who's will sit right on top. And then along the bottom, You've got some, you, this is like the field that you had, that had all of the clovers that Horton had to go looking and find those other who's. They were calling for help. So you've got some other clovers that are sparkly. You maybe have some fuzzy balls like this. You have a little bag of stickers. So some of those, you can, I think those have stickies on the back. 
peel the stickies off and you can stick those flowers in there as well. And then you'll have your picture to remember part one of the Horton Here's a Who story. There you go. A person is a person no matter how small. So for next week, we'll have another Horton craft to do. So we'll see you then. about how he might be able to help that Who family. And maybe you can even think up some ways that you can help other people that maybe are having problems as well. Let's see what you can think of. And we'll see you back again next week when we visit our second week of our Horton Hears a Who. And now our friend Max is back. This is going to be fun. Max? Hi, welcome back everybody. So here is our closing song. We are closing with a song called Like a Rock. I believe you're familiar with it. It's a really, really great one to sing along. And we've got some words that are gonna be on the screen for you to sing with us. And Miss Larry here will have all of the actions for you to do as well.